everybody, welcome back. Uh, so I'm filming on an iPhone because I totally forgot to film an intro uh, for this video here. Uh, but in this video, what we'll be doing is we'll be moving on uh, from where we left off in the last one. So the last one we had just finished clecoing on the rearward most bulkheads for the tail cone. Um, so this, I think we're gonna start here with the rudder stop skin stiffeners, and then we'll get forward to uh, basically clecoing the remainder of the parts together, match drilling, um, and then getting all the way up to page 10-15, step number three, um, which got all the way up to the point of cutting off a piece of the skin, disassembling everything. Um, so yeah, I'll shut up now, we'll get to it and get to building an airplane part. how much I'm gonna regret this uh, but this step here uh, we're up to step number three 10 uh, 10 anyways it involves using actually no step number five involving step number three so anyway step number three I made this piece here according to these dimensions it's working as the spacer uh, between two pieces of material uh, but step number five says to use carpet tape um, to temporarily secure the spacer to the angle which is on top of that tail cone there um, using carpet tape. So I have this carpet tape here, went to, to Ace and picked it up, I think it's like eight bucks or so. Um, but anyways, place carpet tape there. I'm planning on just cutting around it with a razor blade here. Uh, kind of like doing like skateboard grip tape. Uh, but just taking, just basically following the edge with a razor and having the whole entire piece covered with carpet tape. Not sure if I'm gonna regret doing that or not. In the future, uh, I may comment on this, this video, uh, whether or not that was a bad idea to have that much carpet tape on it. I don't think it'll be an issue because this is a pretty big, hefty piece of aluminum here, and this is going to be going on top of a pretty hefty uh, angle aluminum piece as well. Um, so it shouldn't cause issues when I go to pull it apart. I don't think. I hope not. Uh, but anyways, I'll comment in the future uh, if it was an issue because if it, I think if it if it was an issue, I'm probably better to do thin little pieces. I just want to make sure this doesn't move uh, when I'm going to uh, to match drill things. So. Anyway, summed up, gonna use a whole piece of tape here and then I'll let you know in the future if that was a horrible idea. Alrighty, so I've gotten up to the point of clamping these Longerons in the uh, proper alignment. Um, so you'll see in the instructions here um, how it's supposed to basically line up flush with, with each uh, the skin as well as that uh, top plate. Uh, so anyways, that is all lined up, ready to go. So now the nerve wracking point of match drilling uh, along each of the sides of the skins is about to start. Um, so I'm gonna double check real quick again, make sure I'm all lined up perfectly and we'll get to drilling. So if you wonder what I'm doing here, um, it's kind of an interesting uh, 
part of the process, but this step involves feeding each one of these here. Uh, so one, two, three, four, each of these, uh, wherever there's two holes. And it's kind of confusing. It had me wondering uh, what was going on here, but my basic understanding after watching some YouTube videos, looking online, um, it sounds like on these ones with two, it makes two individual pieces where uh, your rivet can make contact with it. Instead of having a, a flat portion there with a curved skin, it kind of separates that one flat piece with two holes into two individual ones once you go ahead and get it fluted. So hopefully we'll, this will all line up after the fact, uh, but had me really weirded out that, uh, that we'd be doing this. Um, I'm not sure how exactly they, uh, they account for the gap. I mean, unless all, all fluters are exactly the same. Um, you'll see I'm literally just splitting the difference between the two holes, doing a heavy flute, as it says in the instructions, and that just means heavy. Like, I mean, I'm squeezing it as, well, as hard as I can. And uh, we'll see how it works. Again, it's only the ones that have, uh, have two holes on them. Uh, not any of the others. So I've gotten the rest of this here match drilled and sized up where it called it out. Um, so off camera just now when that camera battery died, I went ahead and uh, drilled these pieces of angle material uh, that I previously cut down. Uh, match drilled them uh, in their uh, places where they belong. Uh, but I've gotten to a point where uh, I'm going to have to go a little bit creative to do these, this next step here. Because uh, the next step involves actually sizing up these outermost holes. Uh, to a size 12, uh, number, number 12 drill bit. Uh, so you'll see I've already done that here. I think there's gonna be bolts that go here later on. Um, but that's what I have to have here. But the issue I'm running into is my kit from Cleveland Aircraft Tools did not come with a longer version of this. Um, Cause I did end up have, I do have a, a long number 30 and that was handy uh, to get like these inner corner ones. Um, and then also actually I used it uh, wherever I thought the drill bit was gonna interfere with it, keeping it from being uh, uh, fully, uh, I guess, uh, perpendicular to it. So anyways, um, I think my best bet here is going to be to actually see if I can remove these. I looked forward in the plans. There's not anything else that appears to use these back here, like any other um, serious match drilling or anything like that. I, I think I'm done in the re reward most portion. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can sneak my hand inside of there using uh, these handy dandy uh, Clico pliers. These ones that are meant for uh, Go in this direction. Anyways, I'm gonna see if I can get those out of there. That should make things easy instead of having to buy a longer drill bit. So get ready to watch me struggle. Let's see if we can get these out. Yeah, that's still good. Don't wanna drop those. And while I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this correct orientation. It worked. I would totally do it again. Um, I'll let you know. I'll probably uh, link in the video or not link. I'll probably just pop up in the video. If there were any issues with that, I'll probably make that announcement known. Um, but if not, it worked. Alrighty, so I got a little bit further along in the process here. Um, off camera, I went ahead and final sized these holes here in these cover plates. To, I think it's a 28 
uh, number 28 drill bit. Uh, so anyways, got those final size, jumped a little bit ahead. Uh, next step is going to involve removing uh, these two top skins and then putting on uh, these, uh, these uh, seatbelt brackets. Alrighty, so you probably see we have this thing uh, fully disassembled. The last step that I'm going to do on this video here is going to involve cutting off that triangular portion uh, where we drew that line on the right skin. Uh, so if you recall earlier on, not sure if I got that in camera or not, uh, but on the right skin it had us draw a line uh, that met at the, uh, I guess the forward edge of these, uh, these tabs here. Um, so anyways, going to get this, this trimmed off for the right skin only. Uh, the next step from there is going to involve deburring, dimpling, and Doing all that other fun stuff. So probably the last shot in the video, um, but the way I'm doing it is I previously drew that line uh, when it was uh, when it was on assembled on the tail cone. Um, so now I lined a just a piece of masking tape up against it to keep it really clear where I am to cut. Uh, I'm also going to favor one side of this, and then I can always chase it back down in uh, when I go to uh, sand it down and deburr it at the end. I just really want to stay away from uh, getting too far into it, getting too happy there. Uh, so anyways, uh, you'll see that line right there, tape here nice and straight. I'm gonna go ahead and have it clamped down on this piece of wood just to keep everything nice and straight. I don't want it to grab and move or anything while I'm doing this. Also, just erring on the side of caution, I'll throw my Clecos uh, on the side here as well. Keep some weight there. Uh, but anyways, get this cut. Alrighty, so that worked really well. Um, this piece here, as you probably saw, used to live right here, no longer lives there. So got that sanded down or filed down uh, to that line that I drew. Got it deburred already and uh, ready to move forward. Uh, so I'm gonna end the video here. Next video will involve getting all of these parts that are laying all around here, uh, getting them all deburred, dimpled, and ready to go for riveting. Um, so yeah, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, or if you just wanna say hi, say hi in the comments down below. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Adios.